In this video, we will cover the three types of Medtronic valves used for the treatment of hydrocephalus. The first commercial Medtronic valve was the contoured valve, now a part of the CSF flow control valve family. Subsequent to this was the delta valve, with a siphon control device called the delta chamber. And most recently was the strata valve, with adjustable pressure capabilities. We will discuss the variations in design for each valve, including the CSF pathway through the valves, from the ventricular or proximal catheter inlet to the peritoneal or distal catheter outlet. The Medtronic Contoured Valve. The contoured valve consists of a polypropylene base, a silicone dome, and a silicone membrane valve. The contoured valve also has proximal and distal occluders for selective flushing. Additionally, the contoured valve has radiopaque markings. The dot codes indicate valve pressure level and the arrow indicates direction of flow. As CSF flows through the contoured valve, it enters the inlet connector, flows by the proximal occluder and into the central reservoir. For sampling CSF, the reservoir dome can be accessed using a 25 gauge or smaller non-coring needle. From the reservoir, CSF flows through the valve mechanism flow holes. The inlet CSF fluid pressure causes the umbrella shaped membrane to open when intracranial pressure ICP exceeds the resistance of the valve umbrella or membrane. When the ICP is lower than the resistance of the silicone umbrella, the mechanism closes. The thickness of the valve membrane determines the resistance characteristics of the valve. The thinner the membrane, the lower the valve resistance. The thicker the membrane, the higher the valve resistance. These pressure levels have a fixed resistance, which the surgeon selects prior to patient surgery. The contoured valve is available in four fixed pressure levels. Low, 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 medium, and high. The pressure flow graph shows the threshold at which the membrane will open for each pressure level at various flow rates. These levels are determined by the midpoint on the pressure level range at the typical CSF production rate of 20 to 25 milliliters per hour. For example, if a surgeon is using a medium pressure valve at an average flow rate of 25 milliliters per hour, the valve will have a nominal resistance of 95 millimeters H2O. Therefore, when the ICP is above 95 millimeters H2O, the valve opens and drains. When the ICP is lower than 95 millimeters H2O, the valve closes. Now, let's take a look at the next valve and how it differs from our contoured valve. The Medtronic Delta Valve. The Delta Valve consists of a firm polypropylene plastic base, a silicone dome, a silicone membrane valve, and unlike the contoured valve, it has a distal delta chamber component, which provides siphon control when the patient is in an upright position. The delta valve also has proximal and distal occluders for selective flushing. Like the contoured valve, the delta valve has radiopaque markings. The arrow indicates direction of flow, and the marking behind the arrow indicates the valve performance level. Siphoning, or negative hydrostatic pressure, can occur when the patient stands upright and gravity pulls fluid through the shunt. This hydrostatic situation may result in CSF over drainage. As CSF flows through the delta valve, it enters the inlet connector, flows by the proximal occluder and into the central reservoir. For sampling CSF, the reservoir dome can be accessed using a 25 gauge or smaller non-coring needle. From the reservoir, CSF flows through the valve mechanism flow holes. Like the contoured valve, the delta valve also has the silicone membrane valve or diaphragm, which opens or closes depending on the inlet intracranial pressure. By varying the thickness of the membrane, the amount of pressure needed to open the membrane valve can increase or decrease depending on the valve and pressure level chosen. After passing through the membrane valve, the CSF reaches the delta chamber. The inlet area of the delta chamber diaphragm is greater in size than the outlet drainage port, thus allowing positive inlet pressure to control the delta chamber, while minimizing the effects of the negative hydrostatic outlet pressure. 
When the patient is in the supine position, the membranes on either side of the delta chamber are relaxed or open, allowing for CSF flow. When the patient stands up, the negative pressure pulls the membranes closed, reducing the flow of CSF. The delta valve has four performance levels, which directly correlate to the valve pressure flow rates. The valve performance levels are 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, and 2.0. These numerical descriptions are synonymous with the valve pressure ranges from a lower to a higher resistance valve. As shown by the performance level chart, the delta valve system maintains a consistent pressure gradient regardless of the flow rate or patient posture. Finally, let's take a look at our third and final valve configuration and how it differs from the contoured and delta valves. The Medtronic Strata Valve the strata valve consists of a firm plastic base, a silicone dome, an adjustable valve mechanism, and a delta chamber for siphon control. The strata valve also has proximal and distal occluders for selective flushing. Additionally, the strata valve has radiopaque markings to indicate flow direction and orientation of the valve in the X-ray image. As CSF flows through the strata valve, it enters the inlet connector flows by the proximal occluder and into the central reservoir. For sampling CSF, the reservoir dome can be accessed using a 25 gauge or smaller non-coring needle. From the reservoir, the CSF flows into the cone opening of the adjustable valve mechanism. The valve mechanism consists of a ruby ball and circular spring design. At the base of the valve mechanism, there are five concentric platforms of various heights. On top of the valve mechanism base is a plastic rotor element which contains a magnet. The rotor element has feet that are designed to engage with a platform stock. Mounted on top of the rotor element is a pressure flow spring which applies pressure onto a ruby ball. The platform design at the base of the valve mechanism requires the rotor to be magnetically raised onto a higher or lower platform through the use of a Medtronic adjustment tool. This enables a surgeon, using an adjustment tool, to set the performance level on the valve preoperatively and make adjustments once the valve is implanted. Depending on which platform the rotor is sitting, the pressure flow spring increases or decreases force on the ruby ball. The higher the rotator sits, the more force is applied to the ruby ball and the higher the valve resistance. As CSF flows through the valve, more pressure is required to push the ruby ball down in order for CSF to pass through the valve mechanism. The lower the rotor is positioned, the less force is applied to the ruby ball and the lower the valve resistance. As CSF flows through the valve, less pressure is required to push the ruby ball down in order for CSF to pass through the valve mechanism. The rotor retention spring helps to stabilize the magnetic rotor on the selected valve setting. Once the CSF passes through the adjustable valve mechanism, it enters the delta chamber. As discussed with the delta valve, the inlet diaphragm area is greater in size than the outlet port area, thus allowing the positive inlet pressure to control the delta chamber while minimizing the effects of the negative hydrostatic outlet pressure. When the patient is in the supine position, the membranes on either side of the delta chamber are relaxed or open, allowing for CSF flow. When the patient stands up, the negative pressure pulls the membranes closed, reducing the flow of CSF. Since there are five platforms in the valve mechanism, there are five performance levels which directly correlate to the pressure flow rates. Performance levels are 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, and 2.5. These numerical descriptions are synonymous with valve pressure ranges from a lower to a higher resistance. As shown by the performance level chart, the strata valve system maintains a consistent pressure gradient regardless of the flow rate or patient posture. We have just reviewed the three types of valves included in the Medtronic hydrocephalus shunt family. 
you should now have an understanding of the flow path and resistance characteristics of each valve type and the importance valve mechanics plays in valve performance. The family of valves have been designed and built with quality and performance in mind, consistent with all Medtronic products in order to align with our mission to alleviate pain, restore health, and extend life.